Hello everyone. Good morning. Today we are going to start with our third chapter, Fiber to Fabric. Have you ever observed that the clothes you wear every day don't feel the same or even look the same? Some are soft and some are coarse. They even change in different season. In this chapter, we will study about different types of fibers which are used to make different types of clothes. Clothes form a very integral part of our life. They are one of our basic needs besides food and shelter. They protect our body from various weather conditions. They protect us from insect bites, injury, etc. They also enhance our personality to some extent. We wear different types of clothes according to the climate, occupation, culture, traditions and our daily needs. The clothes that we wear daily, the towels that we use, the curtains, the bed sheets, etc. are made up of different types of fabrics. The history of clothing can be traced back to ancient times when people used to cover themselves up with big leaves of trees, barks and animal skin and fur depending upon the weather conditions. But after people began to settle in agricultural communities, they learned to weave twig and grass into mats and baskets. Vines, animal fleas and hair were also twisted together into long strands which were then woven into fabrics. It is believed that the early Indians wore fabrics made out of cotton and Egyptians they used cotton as well as flax which they grew near the river Nile. As stitching was not known in those days, people used to simply drape the fabrics around their body parts. Fabrics were draped in various styles depending upon the conditions. But with the invention of sewing needle, people started stitching fabrics to make clothes. Stitched clothes have gone through many variations since the invention of the needle. But even today, we wear unstitched pieces of fabrics like sari, dhoti, lungi, turban, etc. Children, the material that we use to make clothes is called fabric. Different types of clothes, they are made up of different types of fabrics. A fabric is actually made up of a thread-like structure called yarn, which is made up of a large number of thin hair-like strands, which are twisted together, known as the fibers. Formation of fabric from the fibers is a very long and complex process. So the major objective of studying this chapter is to gain knowledge about different types of fibers and their sources and the processes that are involved in converting the fibers into fabrics. So first of all, let us discuss about the fibers. To observe that fabric is made up of yarns and yarn is made up of fibers, we can do a very interesting activity. Let's take a piece of cotton fabric and observe it under a magnifying glass. You will find that the fabric is made up of large number of threads or yarn which are woven together. Now put this fabric on a flat surface and try to pull out one of the thread or yarn from the open edge. Now put this yarn on the flat surface and press one end of the yarn with your thumb and scratch the other end along its length with your fingernail. You will see that the yarn splits up into thin strands. These thin and hair-like strands are known as the fibers. Fibers are actually very fine hair-like strands which cannot be directly made up into fabrics. So, they first need to be converted into yarns which are much longer, stronger and thicker. So children, by now you must have understood what are fibers? Fibers are very fine 
hair-like strands which are twisted together to form yarn. Depending upon their origin, fibers can be classified into two major categories, natural fibers and the synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are also known as man-made fibers or the artificial fibers. Now let us first of all discuss about the natural fibers. The fibers which we obtain from plants and animals are known as the natural fibers. Cotton, jute, coir, hemp, flax, these are the various examples of natural fibers. These fibers, they are obtained from different plant parts. For example, cotton is obtained from the extensions of the seed and jute is obtained from the fibers which are present in the stem of the jute plant. In addition to this, there are many animal fibers also, like wool and silk. Wool is obtained from the hair or fleece of the sheep. Not only sheep, but hair of rabbit, yak, camel, they also produce wool. And everybody knows how silk is obtained. Silk is obtained from the silkworm. But with the te technological innovations and chemical treatments we are now able to produce many synthetic fibers also these synthetic fibers uh, these are produced in factories by various chemical treatments nylon polyester and acrylic are the various examples of the synthetic fibers now let us study differences between natural fibers and the synthetic fibers the major difference is in the origin. You already know that natural fibers are obtained from natural resources like plants and animals whereas synthetic fibers they are obtained from various petrochemicals in industries. The second major difference is that natural fibers they are more absorbent. They absorb sweat and water very easily. Whereas synthetic fibers, they do not absorb much water. As the natural fibers, they absorb lot of water, they do not dry up easily. Whereas the synthetic fibers, as they absorb less water, they dry up fast. The third difference between them is that natural fibers, they allow air to pass through them. They are very breathable fabrics, whereas the synthetic fibers, they do not allow air to pass through them and hence they are very uncomfortable to wear in summers. You must have observed it yourselves that in summer season, you always try to wear cotton t-shirts. These synthetic clothes, they are not very comfortable in summers. Now though natural fibers are very comfortable but there are some disadvantages of natural fibers also. They get attacked by moths and moles very easily. You must have observed that the pure wool sweaters and cotton clothes they get infested by moths. They are eaten up. You must have seen small holes in your pure clothes. Whereas synthetic fibers are at an advantage here, they are resistant to the attack of moths and moles. Now natural fibers, they are very expensive, they are difficult to maintain and they usually shrink on ordinary washing. You must have observed yourself that these cotton clothes, you have to iron them all the time and they get wrinkled the moment you sit. Whereas the synthetic fibers, they are very cheap, they are very durable and they are easy to maintain and wrinkle resistant. They can withstand ordinary washing as well. So children, I think by looking at these differences, you can very easily tell the advantages of natural fibers and disadvantages of natural fibers over the synthetic fibers and vice versa as well. So children, by now you must have understood that fibers are very thin, weak and small, so they cannot be directly converted into fabrics. So, fibers are first of all twisted together with the help of some devices like takli or charkha and also with the help of machines to form yarn. Twisting is very important as it increases the cohesion within the fibers and gives strength. 
This process of twisting of the fibers together to form yarn is known as spinning. You can see here the pictures of some metal and wooden takti that are commonly used in charkha. Also, you must have seen it many a times in pictures. Actually, it is not at all difficult to make a yarn. You must be having some cotton wool at home. Hold some cotton wool in one hand. Pin some cotton between your thumb and the forefinger of the other hand. Now gently start pulling out the cotton while continuously twisting the fibers. You will be very easily able to make the yarn yourself. Try it at home. So far we have read about yarn. This yarn is now used to make fabric. Fabric can be made from the yarn by two methods, knitting or weaving. You must have noticed your mother or grandmother knitting sweaters for you at home. The process of making a piece of fabric from a single yarn is known as knitting. Knitting can be done either by hand or by machines. Since knitting is done from a single yarn, if we pull a yarn from a sweater, the whole sweater gets unraveled. Socks, sweaters and many other clothing items are made by knitting yarns. Knitted fabrics are quite stretchy. The second method by which fabric can be made from yarn is known as weaving. In this process, two or more sets of yarn are together used to make the fabric. It can be done on looms which may be hand operated known as hand looms or power operated known as power looms. The fabrics which are made by weaving, they are more firm, more durable and are less stretchy. On a loom, fabric is produced by interlacing two sets of threads at right angles to each other. The process of weaving can be understood very clearly by performing a simple activity that you must have done in your junior classes also. Let us do that activity once again and make a piece of weaved paper. Okay everyone, this is your homework. You have to make a weaving pattern from paper and paste it in your notebook. You can make a different pattern. You can make it, see you can make a fish, you can make a flower by weaving or any other pattern that you wish. So students, this is it for today. Your homework is to read the chapter thoroughly from the book. It is very important to go through the book. After going through the book and through the notes that are given in the PDF file, do question 1, 2 and 3 as given on page number 4 of the PDF file. Thank you.